Hey YouTube, Ed here with Jack of All Trades and welcome to another video. So the project of the day today is to put new lights on my ATV trailer. So stay tuned and let's get this project done. So before we get into this video, I just want to do a special subscriber shout out to John Burroughs. John Burroughs is a new subscriber to the channel. Thank you, John, for subscribing. If you want to get a special shout out on the Jack of All Trades channel videos, just let me know in the comments below that you are a new subscriber and I will try to get your name on. And welcome back. So yeah, I've had this trailer for uh, four or five years now and the lights are starting to act up on it. Uh, the other day when I hooked it up, I had to tap on the tail light to get the blinker to work, which generally means the sockets are either getting dirty or they're getting loose. And rather than try and do a repair, lights are so inexpensive now, I just decided I'm going to replace it. Also got some lights like this that are just flat out broken that need to be replaced. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go through and we're going to put all new marker lights on and new tail lights. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I went ahead and uh, I picked these lights up at my local Harbor Freight store. Uh, they're made by a company called Kenway. I've got no experience with them whatsoever. I don't know how long they're going to last and I don't know how good they are. But uh, this light set was $40 and you can see it's an LED light. Uh, looks like even the side marker lights are LED. Uh, the only lights I could find for the fender markers were these, uh, these side marker lights over there. I do not believe those are LED, but they will get the job done. Uh, I paid $40 for this kit, and that set of lights over there cost me $7. So very, very reasonably priced. I guess we'll see how long they last, but these are the lights we're going to go with today. All right, so quite obviously the first thing we got to do is we got to take these old lights off. Uh, you just basically need basic hand tools for this. There's no real mystery to it. Just got to go ahead and remove the hardware and remove the light. All right, so quite common what happens with a lot of these is some of these lights are held on with uh, locking nuts and oftentimes they'll rust out so bad that when you go to turn them off with a socket wrench or any other kind of wrench, uh, the inside portion of the bolt that holds the, the bolt in place actually strips out and you can't get it off. So there's nothing for it at that point. All you have to do is cut it off. You can do this with a number of different tools. You can use a demo, uh, Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel or you can use a sawzall with a metal cutoff wheel, a hacksaw, whatever you have to do, you're just gonna have to go ahead and cut those off at that point. All right, so once you got the light removed, uh, Generally, the easiest thing to do is a lot of times these wires will just pull out. If they don't just pull out, go ahead and just take your side cutters and cut them off. Make sure you leave as much wire as you possibly can to uh, wire in your new lights. All right, so in this light kit, you're going to get a, a driver's side light and a passenger side light. And you can tell the difference is because the driver's side light usually has a a downward shining light for your license plate bracket. You're also going to get a fistful of wire. You're going to get the the two marker lights. You're going to get some instructions and you're going to get a bag of connectors. Now my wiring is actually good. I know that. So I'm just going to keep that wire for future reference. I'm not going to replace all the wire. I only need to replace the lights. This bag of hardware and uh, wire connectors, you can pretty much just throw that away because these are crap and they are guaranteed to leak. The first thing I would do is I would go out and I would get some butt connectors that are heat shrinkable. And all these butt connectors here have got some heat shrink around them and they do a nice, good watertight seal. And I will show you how to use those here in a bit. All right, so just about all of these trailers use a uh, common ground electrical system, which means that they use the, they use the frame of the trailer as actually the return circuit or the ground circuit for the trailer. So anytime I change a light, uh, I always 
try to clean up these surfaces as best I can. I really like these wire brushes that you can get on the end of your drill. Uh, you can get a multi-pack usually at Harbor Freight for not a whole lot of money. And they do a really nice job of cleaning all the, the rust and the paint and everything off so you can get a good ground circuit through your light. So I just go ahead and hook them up to my drill. I clean the surfaces off really good where the grounds are gonna be, and then I install my light. And if you don't have one of those wire wheel sets, just some sandpaper, some emery cloth uh, can be utilized to do the same thing to remove the, remove the rust and the contamination off of here so you can get a good ground. So as you can see, this is pretty caked on and it's pretty heavy. So I'm gonna get real with this and I've got my four and a half inch uh, grinder here with a flapper wheel on it. I'm just going to really get after this and get aggressive with it and really clean this up. I plan on repainting it afterwards anyway. All right, so I've got my new light here and you always want to make sure that you notice the arrow here and they almost always, always say top and point to the top. The other way you can determine this is there's usually an outside marker light here like this one has. That always faces outboard on the to the trailer. Uh, the wire should go inboard. You got three wires here. White is your ground. Brown is always for your running lights or your tail lights. And green is always for your stop turn signals. So these are the ones that the green wire is the one that actually controls the flashers for your turn signals or the brake lights. So go ahead and then I just take and put the light back into the new holes. Run the nuts down and then tighten them down. All right, so like I said before, the white wire is always your ground wire. Now you can do this ground wire a couple of different ways. You can either screw it to the side of the frame here with a self-tapping screw, or you can actually put it onto this stud of the light right here and that will also provide a ground. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove this nut that I just tightened down and that's where I'm gonna install my ground. All right, so I've got my wires here from the trailer and here's the wires for my lights. Now these wires that come out of the lights are usually kind of frayed and messed up. So try and straighten the wires out and then go ahead and give them a twist to kind of get them all back in a bundle again. Then I go ahead and I take one of my heat shrink connectors. I put it in my wire crimper and I go ahead and I crimp on the wires onto the new light first just to get them on there and get them in place so I don't have to fumble with them later. Okay, so I've got the new wires crimped on there and they're good and crimped. Now I don't need all of this wire. I've got way more wire than here than what I need. And quite honestly, by the time I ever have to change these lights again, the wire will probably need to be replaced as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut off some excess here, some wire that I don't need and just get it out of my way so it's not hanging there because any kind of excess wire that you have laying around just has the opportunity to get snagged up. So go ahead and just cut them as short as I need, leaving myself plenty of extra space so that I can go ahead and strip the wire and connect them. Then just take your wire strippers and strip off some of the wire insulation. Okay, now what you need to know is that the brown wire on both tail lights is always your, your park lights or your running lights, they always call them. So you hook up the brown wire from the trailer to the brown wire on your light using the same process and crimping that we did before on the, when we crimped on the tail lights. Okay, so we've got that crimped on. Then the green wire obviously gets crimped on to the green wire of your new light. Okay, now that you've got your lights all crimped together, 
Go ahead and take your torch, get a flame going and go ahead and heat shrink these heat shrink connectors down. Never hold the flame directly on it, just always pass it over. You can also do this step with a, a Bic lighter or any kind of a heat source. Uh, a heat gun will also do it, but the key is, is to don't hold the heat source on it because you will actually scorch the heat shrink. Just pass it over and shrink it down. You'll notice that I'm going from front to back and side to side. You kind of have to apply equally uh, heat equally to 360 degrees of the connectors to get them to shrink down evenly. And there you have it, they're all shrunk together. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a zip tie and I'm just gonna zip tie these wires up and out of the way to the spare hole that I've got up here. That way I don't have to worry about anything snagging the wires. And our new tail light is installed. Well, let's go ahead and let's install the fender marker light. So these, side, or these uh, fender marker lights are actually grounded uh, through the mounting bolts, so I don't need to have a clean surface here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna uh, paint this fender with uh, some Rust-Oleum acrylic just to take care of the rust and kind of clean things up a little bit. In case you're wondering, the paint does stick to your hand. So these uh, side marker lights that I've got, I've got to qualify my statement, these are LED. Um, you have to open these up to mount them and I noticed right away as soon as I opened it up that it's, a, it's an LED light, so nice surprise for me. So basically how you mount these is you use self-tapping screws in those two holes and then it grounds through those screws. So there is no ground wire on this, it is just grounded through the light, through the light board. So you have to take the cover off to expose those two screw holes. Now, when I mount lights like this, I never use the same holes as was there before. I always like to cut new holes with the self-tapping screws because that is your ground. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna make sure that I'm off of my old holes and screw in new holes and get this light mounted. All right, so this light's pretty simple. Like I said, it's grounded through the, through the mounting holes. So there's only one wire. They usually strip a little bit off for you. Just take and twist the wires back again. Find out how long you need. Cut your wire to the correct length. Strip off your trailer wire. Add your crimp connection. Grab your torch and heat shrink it. And snap on your light cover. That light is installed. This particular light has one nut on the back side. And of course it's rusted on enough where the nut is stripped the socket on the inside of the light, so we're gonna have to cut this one off as well. So I immediately have a problem. The light that I got with the kit is way bigger than the bracket welded onto the trailer. So I need to make a different bracket to mount this light to. This light 
has a ground. So it does not ground through the light socket like the last one we did. So I obviously have to put on some means to ground this light. So I'm gonna attach a ring terminal right there. And then that ring terminal is going to sit affixed onto that mounting screw that I used, that I'm gonna to use to mount this light. Now, along with these lights, you do not get any means to mount these. So you're gonna to have to come up with some kind of a mounting method, either using self-drilling or whatever, but I had these number 10 machine screws lying around in my uh, hardware bin, so I'm gonna go ahead and use these. Then I'm gonna go ahead and mount the light. That light is mounted. Now, I've obviously got this wire, this final wire I gotta connect here, and just like the other ones, I am going to use a heat shrink butt connector and go ahead and crimp that on and take my torch and heat shrink it together. And there we have it. Now we just have to go around and do the installation on all the rest of the lights. And there you have it. Uh, the project is done. All the lights are working and everything went just exactly as it should. Uh, you'll see here by this video that I will put up right now, uh, those lights are actually really bright. Uh, they weren't kidding on the package when they say super bright LED lights. Uh, I was a little skeptical that the $40 kit from Harbor Freight was going to be super bright as they claimed on the package, but they are very, very bright and they are doing a very nice job. Now, the question is, how are they gonna hold up? Uh, I will do a follow-up video after the hunting season this year and I will let you know that. I will be basically driving to and from the cabin pretty much every weekend from now through November and I will be towing ATVs and my lawnmower and gear and all that kind of stuff pretty much on a week every weekend basis and I'll let you know how it holds up to the gravel roads, the dust. I'm certain I will run into some kind of weather at some point in time where I'll be trailing through some nasty weather. And I will let you know how those lights hold up for the, through the vibration and just typical use the gravel roads and the harsh conditions that I'll be driving in. So more to follow. We'll find out if the $40 light kit is actually going to hold up. So let's go ahead and wrap up this video now. If you're liking this kind of content and you're liking what you see here on the Jack of All Trades channel, you'd be doing me a huge solid by hitting that like and subscribe button down below. Make sure you ring that notification bell so you get notified of upcoming videos and hit me with the comments. Have you used this light kit before? Have you had a bad experience with it? Have you had good experiences with it? And let's learn from each other's experiences and let's everybody in the community know what, know what they've experienced with this kit if you've used it. If you've never wired in a trailer, if this was at all helpful, please let me know and I'll continue to do more videos like this. With that, this is Ed from Jack of All Trades. As always, thank you for stopping by and we will see you on the next video.